Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at three useful Dynamo scripts when working with piling. So let's take a look at what we've got at the minute. This is one of the Autodesk sample files, so this is a, a structural model of course, and you can see here that we have a number of different piling configurations within the model. Let's take a look at some of these configurations now. So you'll notice here that we have a nested family. So we have a pile cap and inside this, if I use the tab key to select one of these, you can see that I have a pile nested into the uh, pile cap. We also have other configurations over here where we have single piles added into the model. So let's now take a look at those. So if we rotate the model round, you can see here, for example, I have a ground beam and inside the ground beam, you can see that I've just got singular piles that have been placed out. We've also got a foundation slab as well. So let's now take a look at that. That's the foundation slab here. And once again, you can then see that I've got, in this case, groups of piles added in. So we've got a real mixture here. Now, the idea is that we want to number up these piles sequentially. So let's just explain how that's going to work. I'm going to switch now to the 01 entry level plan. And if we zoom into the plan here, as we start to number the piles, what we're going to do here is start on the bottom left. And what it's going to do is it's going to group the piles by the host. Now, when I say the host, it could either be the pile cap, or in this case, you can see if I select this element here, we have a simple foundation slab. And none of these uh, piles are obviously hosted into it, but they're encapsulated inside that geometry. And of course, the same is true for our ground beam as well. Again, these piles are encapsulated within that profile. OK, so let's first run the Dynamo script and then we'll take a look at how they work. So I'm going to open up the piling schedule in here and you can see there's already some coordinates actually added in, but the marking isn't correct. So what we're going to do is now go ahead and use the Dynamo player to actually run the script. So we'll select Dynamo player. And you can now see that I have three scripts that we're going to run here. The first one is going to place in the coordinates, which are these uh, northing and eastings here, and the cutoff level. So we'll click play, and you'll then see that has now completed. Uh, we'll then number the piles. Now what I'm going to do here is go into edit inputs here, and you can see that we can choose the category that we're going to uh, utilize here. In this case, I'm uh, using P for a prefix then a, a hyphen for a separator. And here you can see that I've got the option for zero padding. So I'm gonna go for three zeros here and I'll click play. If you look at the uh, previous pile numbering, it wasn't using the padding. So this is now going to add that padding in. Okay, so you can now see the padding's added in and you can see all of those piles are named. Okay, so we'll go back to our Dynamo player and we'll run the final one here, which is going to create a piling schedule. So we'll click this and then you'll see this is exported out to Excel. OK, so obviously there you can see that we've got three uh, Dynamo scripts that are very easy to deploy and save lots and lots of time. So this could go directly out to the piling contractor um, without having to share the Revit model if that wasn't needed. Let's also now go back into our plan and we'll take a little look at what's gone on. In fact, I'm going to switch to the sub level here so we can just see the piles themselves. And just so you can see how the numbering system has worked, we'll go ahead and tag these. So we'll go to annotate, uh, tag all, and here we'll just pop down some structural foundation tags that are gonna put out the pile marks. So let's go ahead and do that. And if we zoom in here, yeah, we can now see how they've been marked up. So you can see we've got 29, 30, 31, 32, and then we come in here, 33, 34, 35, 36, and so on. So you can see that the Dynamo script has grouped the piles based on the footprint that it was hosted into. Let's now take a look at this in a bit uh, more detail. What I'm gonna do here is physically open up the Dynamo script uh, in here. Now, I won't open up the coordinates one or the Excel piling schedule one. We're just gonna uh, focus in on the numbering of these piles. So I'll edit this, and of course this will then open up Dynamo and then open up the script as well. So let's just give this a few seconds. Okay, we'll close down the Dynamo player and we'll now just focus in on this Dynamo script. Now you can see it's a, a fairly lengthy script, but let's go through it in uh, order of what's happening here. So you can see at the minute, I'm just fishing out the structural foundations. 
what I'm then doing is making sure that we've just got piling in here. Now, if I hit run here, that will obviously populate Dynamo with the various different previews so I can show you the data. OK, so you can now see uh, that this is simply saying, does the string contain a diameter? If it does, we are then filter in that. What we're then doing is we are then getting all of the items that aren't piles. So in this case here, you can see that I've got all of my foundations. Now, this could be structural foundation slabs, ground beams, you know, whatever it happens to be there. And we're then getting the bottom surface of those. So that's actually what's happening here. We are getting the lowest point and we're then getting that surface. And again, we're filtering that list. So when you're seeing all of these surfaces here, that's the underside of all of our structural foundations. What we're then doing is creating polygons from the surface boundaries. Why are we doing that? Well, that's going to give us a center. And then here, we're actually sorting those points by the X and Y coordinates. So essentially, all of these surfaces are then sorted in the right X and Y order. What's then happening up here is you can then see that we're getting the location of all the piles and then we're generating lines from all of these piles. The reason for that is we're then intersecting those. So if we come across here, you can then see we're asking Dynamo to say, does these lines intersect? So obviously, if these lines intersect with these surfaces, therefore, the piles are hosted within that element. So you can then see over here, we're then getting the piles in a clockwise order. So what we're doing here is getting the location. We're then finding the average in the X and the Y here, and then creating some vectors and using some vector maths here to work out the clockwise direction of all of those points. And then, of course, here we're actually renumbering all of those piles. Um, you can see here to operate with the Dynamo player, we've got uh, various different input boxes here that are actually working as inputs. So this is allowing us to uh, put our padding in, our prefix and separator and so on. And then, of course, we've got a watch window here, which is just showing the output. So that's a quick walkthrough of the Dynamo script. Now, it's quite an interesting one because a lot of the applications that I've reviewed in the past don't actually do this. You know, a lot of them would just uh, work with piles that are uh, nested into pile caps rather than um, piles that you've placed out manually. And of course, in a real project, um, as we know, we're going to have situations where we've got piles in ground beams and poles in foundation slabs and rafts and so on. So this is quite a nice uh, way of working. So those three Dynamo scripts really highlight how powerful Dynamo is within these type of workflows. You know, and without those three scripts I've just shown you here, this type of work would take many hours to complete. But in this case, it's just a few minutes. Okay, hope that's been useful and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.